Okay guys, how's it going? So this is one of those things where I was looking for this information myself. Uh, I thought there'd be some reference material along these lines. Couldn't find it, so I just decided to make it. So uh, what you're looking at here, uh, this is just some simple animation in Animate where I've just basically uh, demonstrated every single uh, easing effect or tweening effect, um, the, the defaults that come with it. You can obviously customize your own uh, and you can you know just do it without any tweening and just do it by eye uh, you know old school as I probably do for most of the time to, to be honest with you but regardless I thought it'd be quite interesting to compare all of the different uh, default easing and then talk about them and then show a few examples of how you you know putting it into practice basically um, so what we're looking at here is a bunch of pendulums obviously flipping backwards and forwards really simple they've all got exactly the same keyframe one keyframe to the left and one keyframe to the right uh, and they just flip backwards and forwards. And the only difference is the tweening effect or the type of easing and easing out uh, that I'm using. And all of these are the, the defaults. None of these are sort of custom or anything. So that would be quite interesting to compare all of those. And then we'll look at the graph editor and we'll have a look at, um, you know, what that looks like in relation to the movement. Uh, so as you can see, all the ones along the top there, they're all just easing in. Uh, all the ones along the middle are just easing out. And then all the ones along the bottom are the ease in and ease out. Um, now, obviously, you wouldn't use many of these for a pendulum type action, but I just use that as a sort of a standard simple action, um, which shows the shows the effect, and you can compare it side by side. Probably, if I was going to pick one of these to use for a actual pendulum, I'd probably just use the, the ease in and out quad, um, or possibly the ease in and out uh, cubic or possibly the sign, the ease in and out sign. That's, that's probably ones I'd use for an actual pendulum. But regardless, um, as you can see, these are really remarkably different considering they all have exactly the same keyframes, exactly the same amount of movement, and it's just the, uh, the, ease, the tweening effect, basically the ease in, ease out type effect. Um, it's different, they are drastically different. Some of them you may notice actually go beyond the keyframe position, uh, notably the um, back and I think the elastic does too. So they actually, uh, the, the, the graph editor curve is designed in, in a way that basically where you put your keyframe in, the actual action takes it beyond that and then flings it back the other way. Uh, which is can be quite a nice effect for certain things. Anyway, so that's all of those side by side. Now let's have a look at it compared to the actual graph editor, the actual curve that it's using. Uh, so these are just the ease ins. Um, so as you, you know, as you can see there, with no ease, it's just a linear passage. Um, basically, you just got a uh, time and the amount of movement plotted out here. In case you know nothing about a graph editor, and as you can see, uh, the ease in quad has a little bit of an ease in there. So it's it just starts the motion slowly and then ramps up. And then if you look at the cubic, the quart and the quint, they're basically more extreme versions of that same thing, getting progressively more uh, aggressive in the amount of ease. Uh, sign is a little bit sort of neutral. Um, back, like I said, the back's quite interesting because it sends it beyond your keyframe position and then it zips it back. I often think about that like um, if you see someone like a cartoon character about to run, they'll sort of freeze, uh, they'll be frozen in, in position, and then just before they leave, they sort of rear back, and then they zip forward. So it's almost like a sort of a, a preemptive uh, movement to the action that's about to come. Uh, Cirque is fairly aggressive, fairly aggressive ease, uh, and then bounce is obviously, you know, is a really quite erratic one, and it does seem to be like it's, um, yeah, literally bouncing off of a hard, hard surface and elastic is almost like the opposite of that. Let's quickly flick over to the, the outs. So as you can tell, the, the ease out version is basically the like the mirror image. So all of the aggressive action is happening at the end of the end of the movement, not at the beginning of the movement. So it's easing out. Um, so it's faster at the beginning and then easing out and all of the action is happening at the, the far end and then the ease in and out. Obviously, it's the same thing, but it's just got the same effect applied to the beginning and the end. Um, now, you could say that these are these are just a tick tick one second pendulums, uh, which doesn't actually give you that much time. So some of the these actions would 
sort of play out better with like a longer uh, tween. So something that was happening over a full second or a second and a half or something like that. So bear that in mind. So some of the full action doesn't necessarily play out too well in this um, in this amount, keep this amount of uh, frames. But yeah, so there you go. That's easing and out. Now again, yeah, if I was going to pick one of these for an actual pendulum, I'd probably use the possibly the sine or the quad, um, maybe the cubic. It just depends. You know, there's different types of inertia and different weights of objects. Sometimes you want to exaggerate movement, so you want a really exaggerated, um, you know, twang to the movement. But anyway, so that's that. I thought it was quite interesting looking at the um, the graph editor, the actual the curve line, uh, and how that appears next to the actual movement. Something that I should point out. So with the like, for instance, the ease out back that the graph editor line doesn't really reveal the exact movement because essentially the graph line goes off the chart. So the, it, it, it's just in if you look at um, if you look at the same graph editor in After Effects, it kind of shows you more, but you can't it, animate it has a fairly simple graph editor. So it doesn't let you see outside of the two keyframes. Um, but I'll just draw that on for you. So it's just to kind of explain what I mean. So here's what the um, the graph editor looks like in animate. Now, if I draw on the line that it's actually taking, as you can see, it goes out of shot and then back into shot. So it goes off the chart and then back in. That's why if you look at the um, the action here, I'll put the, uh, the two keyframe positions on screen. As you can see, it actually goes beyond the keyframes. Hence the, uh, the, the graph, the, uh, the curve goes off the chart because the movement goes beyond the keyframe and then back in fast across and then beyond and then back again. So I yeah, just thought that's kind of might be useful for you to understand some of these that don't contain all the information in the graph editor. Anyway, so there you go. That's that's all of those. Let's have a look at them all together again. So there you go. That's a little bit of um, I thought this was the sort of the money shot where it's going to be quite a useful reference for many people that perhaps they want to choose, you know, perhaps they just always use the same eases, the same ease tweens, or perhaps they just always do it by eye. Um, but looking at this might give them an idea, you know, of like a, a wider palette to choose from. Might be useful anyway. Certainly, um, I, I'm finding it useful doing this. Anyway, let's have a look at a couple of examples of putting these into practice, just with some really, really simple animation. So here we go. So here's a really simple little animation that I just made this morning. <clears throat> Tiny bit of text coming in, three, two, one. And then a little pole knocks a ball kind of off a table and the ball moves along and bounces. So this is what it looks like with no eases at all. So this is just a mechanical keyframe points. Uh, just so you know, the it's not following a path here. I've just got two layered up animations with it, you know, two timelines within uh, the graphic, which is quite straightforward. We have one that's moving the ball up and down and then one that's moving the ball left to right. Um, so, anyway, so that's what it looks like with no eases. Now let's insert all of our eases and then we'll play it. So here we go. So now we've got a much more sort of a much more appealing action to the numbers. Um, I've added a bit of motion blur as well because the, the movement was really quite quick and it's quite jarring without motion blur if the objects are moving across screen at a real old rate. Uh, and then we've got a little bit of a pull back on the cue there just before it hits and then the ball falls down sort of under gravity, gets pulled, speeds up towards the ground, then bounces a couple of times and comes to a rest. I don't really see this as a, a pool ball or, you know, like a snooker ball. I think it's got a little bit more squash than that and it's a bit slightly squidgier. So it's maybe like a squash ball, something like that. Um, just doing this by eye, you're not, not really trying to replicate any particular type of physics, you know, but I just wanted to give it some weight and then, yeah, use these these um, tween effects or eases just to, you know, just to explain. So let's talk through what eases I've used for this simple little demo really isn't anything too complicated. So starting with the cue, the cue's just got a simple little back ease in. So it's just keyframe to keyframe, but as you can tell, it moves back a little bit before it twangs forward. So that gives it that kind of like as if someone's pulling the a cue back and then they push it forward. So it has a little, little bit of sort of a preempt to the action and a tiny bit of ease out. And then these two, um, the actual ball itself. So we have one quite simple, a quad ease out, and that's responsible for moving the ball across the screen from its uh, position to the left and the position to the right. If I drop on the um, some scaffolding, so you can sort of see what I mean. 
Uh, there we go. So now you can see that is just doing that action from left to right. And then within that, um, that graphic, we've just got the ball basically going up and down. So again, we're using the quad ease in and then so it eases in from a resting point down, speeds up towards the ground, and then we have a quad ease out. So every time the ball is at its highest point is where we have the majority of the easing so that the gravity is pulling things down and just before it hits the ground, it's traveling fastest and then it's being twanged back up into the air and then slowing back down, giving our nice um, sort of parabola curve there. Um, again, I'm just, this is all just with, with eases. And then with the numbers, quite straightforward really um, we're using an elastic ease out as the number comes on screen so it has a bit of a twang almost like it's sort of dangling by elastic then it settles into its final position holds a uh, position just for about is that five frames six frames and then we have a back ease in so we have a little bit of a, a, a bounce down and then it zips out really fast and yeah, as you can tell, I had a little bit of motion blur there just because it's quite an aggressively fast action and it just helps with the um, helps with the read if you put motion blur with something that's moving this quick. Uh, so there you go, so that's the uh, the numbers. So a uh, elastic ease out to get it on screen and a back ease in to get it off screen. And and that's it. Yeah, that's all the all of the uh, eases in this one. So the vast majority are the quad ease out. I found it just ha seems to have a uh, quite a natural um, feel about it. it. It does seem to reproduce, you know, inertia in the real world quite well, especially if it's um, you know physical objects that are kind of you know working under under gravity. Um, but you could certainly use some of the other types of um, uh, effects. I think the, the cubic or the quart uh, would also work fine. And definitely the sign would be fine as well. But I just find this is, has quite a natural sort of look to it. Nothing nothing over the top, not too animated, if that makes sense. It, it seems to look fairly natural. Anyway, so there you go, guys. That's uh, a little look at um, our uh, different default uh, animate uh, tweening effects or ease in, ease out effects. These are all, there's, none of these are custom. They're all just me clicking on one of the defaults. Um, and yeah, I just do think that all of these next to each other, are quite useful. They really are. I've, there's quite a few of these I just, I, I've not really used before. Uh, but now I've seen them next to each other. I think I probably will use some of them a little bit more often. So it's nice to have, yeah, a few, a few more options, isn't it? You know, don't limit yourself too much. But like I said, I tend to tend to uh, do this kind of stuff literally by eye and I don't use the tweens but at the same time when you're trying to turn around a job really quick or let's say you want some consistency in the movement if you're using these cookie cutter uh, ease, ease ins or tween effects then that can actually really help if they've all got exactly the same curve and you know you want a consistent um, let's say you're just moving text on and off the screen and you want a consistent effect then obviously these these might be a go-to um, you can of course set up your own customs but either way you know there's nothing wrong with using these tools those they're there to be used anyway guys i'll leave that there um i hope this was useful um like i said it was a case of me looking for this information not finding it so <laughs> i just making it and sharing it uh, it's one of these things that i tend to do anyway guys i'll speak to you later and i hope all of that was useful peace out